The evolution of technology, along with a rapid growth in demand for data across the globe, is largely driven by the leading hyperscale data center providers. To meet demands across the industry, firms are rapidly expanding and delivering new infrastructure options with an expected 628 hyperscale data centers worldwide by 2021. Hyperscale computing is necessary for cloud and big data storage as well as other applications. IT spending on data center systems worldwide is expected to amount to $208 billion in 2020. Welcome to inter inter Internet Infrastructure Issues. I'm your host, Dale Mullen. I'm with McGuire Woods, an international law firm at the Nerve Center of the Data Exchange. For data centers and related industries, our team of professionals provides legal services, environmental, social, and corporate governance issue solutions, and practical business advice from the commencement of electronic data collection through site selection, transmission, construction, storage, and security. We're really glad to have you with us today. I, I'm, I'm joined by three really exciting guests who are also at the center of the data center explosion in the United States and specifically in central Virginia. I'm joined today by Lisa Lingerfeld. Lisa is the business unit leader in the Mid-Atlantic at DPR Construction. DPR is a forward-thinking national general contractor and construction manager specializing in technically complex and sustainable projects for advanced technology, mission critical, life sciences, healthcare, higher education, and corporate office markets. DPR Construction was ranked on Fortune's 100 best companies to work for in America for five consecutive years. I'm also proud to be joined with my friend Stan Blackwell. Stan Blackwell is the Director of Customer Solutions and Strategic Partnerships for Dominion Energy. Stan is responsible for the management of large customers throughout the Northern Virginia region. Additionally, he's responsible for all economic development activities in Dominion Energy's electric service territories in Virginia and North Carolina. Stan's team works to ensure that existing and new customers have safe, reliable electric service at competitive rates with innovative energy solutions to meet customers' changing energy needs. Also with us today is my friend Vinay Nagpal. Vinay is a data center and connectivity leader and visionary with over 25 years of experience developing products and technology solutions, business growth strategies and data centers with a strong focus on connectivity, subsea and terrestrial fiber. Vinay is currently the president of Interglobix, a global consultancy and advisory firm focused on the convergence of data centers, subsea and terrestrial fiber. As the founding member and executive director of the IEIC, a global industry initiative actively leading the development of diverse, resilient interconnection ecosystems globally. I'd also like to introduce you to an internet infrastructure resource. There's actually a magazine that really serves more as a reference guide because it has 90% of the content written by leaders in the internet infrastructure industry. And that resource is Interglobix Magazine. That's I-N-T-E-R-G-L-O-B-I-X. You can find them on the internet at www.interglobix.com. I'm happy to say that in the anniversary issue, uh, we'll see some exclusive legal content from McGuire Woods. Our first speaker up today has been around for a long time in the economic development game. His name is Anthony Romanello. And for those of you who don't know Anthony, and, and there's probably a few on the line who don't, Anthony is the executive director at Henrico, Virginia's Economic Development Authority. The Henrico County Economic Development Authority <coughs> serves a thriving metropolitan community just adjacent to the city of Richmond, Virginia's capital. Anthony's experienced staff are ready to partner with you and power your business towards success, connecting you with the most up-to-the-minute property listings, business initiatives, and workforce development opportunities Henrico has to offer. Anthony, good afternoon. Thank you, Dale. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today and giving us your time to tell a little bit about uh, a little bit of Henrico's story. We have a presentation for you here that I'd like to begin. Just a little bit about Henrico. We're in the heart of the Mid-Atlantic. We're about 100 miles from Ashburn, 100 miles from Virginia Beach. We're a suburban and urbanizing community. About 335 residents, 25,000 businesses, 
and one of the nation's shortest commutes at 22 minutes for an average commute. Our average home price is just over a quarter of a million dollars, and our county government is triple, triple A bond rated with a county manager form of government that enables us to be very efficient and very responsive to our business community. Our fire department is top notch, internationally accredited and class one insurance rating throughout uh, the entire county. We also own all of the county roads, which makes us very nimble in responding to the needs of the business community. Henrico is a great place to live, a great place to work, a great place to come visit. We have 40 parks and recreational facilities throughout our county. Uh, they're all top notch from passive recreation to trails to active recreation and some of the best sports tourism offerings in uh, Virginia and the United States for soccer, football, baseball, pickleball, practically any sport that uh, folks enjoy uh, these days. We have nine Blue Ribbon Schools of Excellence. We have five nationally ranked high schools. We have nine libraries in our county, three of which were recently built and all of which have been recognized as national and international architectural gems. The Metro Richmond area was also named one of the top 10 coolest cities in America to visit. My kids will tell you that distinction has nothing to do with me, but it is a great place to be and a great place to have a business here in Metro Richmond. Our existing industry is diverse and it's strong, as you can see by this map of Henrico, and a very strong industry base from advanced manufacturing, data centers and data center support industries, finance, health and insurance, as well as uh, banking, a very um, a diverse set of industries throughout Henrico that we're very proud to continue uh, to nurture. And you'll see many of those names are national names that most folks I'm sure on this uh, video today are very familiar with. We have a very strong data center presence in Henrico and it continues to grow. Uh, three types of data centers, wholesale data centers, those leasing uh, long-term space like the folks at QTS and Edge Connects. We have enterprise uh, data centers uh, typically uh, for um, uh, one user um, as uh, those that are listed as well as retail data centers again with QTS and the recent merger of Flexential and Peak 10 and the folks at uh, Edge Connect. So a variety of offerings in Henrico for those who have uh, big data needs. We're a great place to do business. We'd like to say that our, uh, our costs are low and they are. The average land cost in the county is about $140,000 per acre out at the White Oak Technology Park, which I'll talk about a little bit uh, more in the next slide. Uh, our business uh, personal property tax rate was reduced by uh, 90% about three years ago. It's now 40 cents, one of the lowest in Virginia. And our real estate tax rate is at 87 cents, which makes it the lowest among Virginia's top 10 largest localities. We have a great, talented, uh, plentiful workforce in Henrico and in the region with just under 200,000 folks working in Henrico and just under 700,000 in our region. We're number one uh, just behind Northern Virginia, number two in the state, number one behind Northern Virginia for IT and technology employment. And 90,000 graduates a year uh, come out of colleges within a two hour drive of Henrico. And there's about 30 colleges, universities, and professional schools that are in the Richmond uh, region uh, all around us. 93% of our population has a high school diploma or better, and 43% have a bachelor's degree or higher. Turning to the White Oak Technology Park, it's in eastern Henrico, very near the Richmond International Airport. It's a 2300 acre park with about 900 acres available it's con that is owned by the Henrico Economic Development Authority. Uh, the land in the tech park is certified by the Virginia Economic Development Partnership as a tier four site, which means that it's ready, uh, ready for development uh, for any industry that uh, chooses to go in there. And our targets for uh, the tech park are data centers as well as advanced uh, manufacturing. The property that is for sale is owned by the Henrico Economic Development Authority, and as I mentioned, the roads that are in the park are owned uh, by Henrico County, which help us to move very quickly through any permitting processes. These are some of the folks that are at the tech park today, uh, QTS, Facebook, Hewlett Packard, Lumber Liquidators, uh, Polycon, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Facebook's 
expansion uh, in the White Oak Technology Park. Next slide is a video, a short video that we have that's going to give you a very high level tour of the White Oak Technology Park. Welcome to White Oak Technology Park. Henrico's 2,270-acre industrial park, perfectly located near Richmond International Airport and I-295, with direct access to Technology Boulevard. The park features configurable sites ranging from 17 to 818 contiguous acres. <clears throat> with nearly 900 sprawling acres of build-ready industrial land remaining. Community is composed of world leaders throughout several industries, including Polycon Manufacturing, which invested $60 million to develop its cosmetic and pharmaceutical manufacturing operation in Henrico. QTS, the fourth largest data center in the world, and Facebook, which recently announced a total investment of $1.7 billion in its massive data center complex in White Oak Technology Park. Here, merchandise moves. The park's central location in Henrico allows for overnight access to 55% of the U.S. population and major international ports. Get a boost from Dominion Energy, which serves the industrial park with a dual-feed, dual-circuit, 230,000-volt transmission system, multiple distribution substations, and a 34,500-volt circuit. With so much to offer, it's no wonder <coughs> that White Oak Technology Park is one of the premier development opportunities on the east coast of the U.S. White Oak Technology Park in Henrico, Virginia. Your international business success starts here. So you heard in the video about the incredible electric infrastructure that Dominion provides to uh, folks at the White Oak Technology Park. And we all know that that is uh, what is there now is very strong and uh, substantial expansion uh, capabilities that Stan will talk about a little later. Also mentioned that the county owns the water and sewer utilities uh, throughout Henrico and also at the White Oak Technology Park. Uh, for water, we've got 10 million gallon capacity for sewer, 13 million gallon Mountain million gallons per day capacity. And I'd mentioned with water that our county is in the process of building the uh, Cobbs Creek uh, Reservoir uh, in Cumberland County, Virginia, which will uh, store water in the James River and will enable us to meet the water needs for Henrico as well as the Richmond region for decades uh, to come. Network and connectivity, you'll hear Vinay talk a little bit more about this later. This is uh, one of the strong features that we have throughout Henrico with fiber routes going east and west, as well as north and south, abundant long haul fiber on the I-95 corridor and multiple network connectivity options, including uh, the network access point at QTS in the White Oak Technology Park. Henrico is the world's center for diverse and resilient traffic to Europe, to South America, and soon to be to Africa. And here's why the existing Brusa and Morea undersea cables, as well as Denant and the South African Exchange, which are coming very soon, all channel through the QTS NAP. They come uh, on board at Virginia Beach or on shore at Virginia Beach, and then come directly to uh, Henrico, where they connect um, the Eastern United States to the rest of the world. This connectivity will be further enhanced by a confluence cable that will run between New York and Miami, connecting directly to Virginia Beach and then right into the White Oak Technology Park. Uh, Dale mentioned the IEIC, which uh, Vinay is a founder of that. Henrico is, is pleased to be the only local government member of the IEIC Global Initiative, which is bringing substantial resources to bear as we all work to adapt uh, to the, need, the data needs of a very quickly changing world. I would. Just draw your attention to three recent webinars, which are on the IEIC website. Just fascinating presentations by the Chief Technology Officer at Ford, as well as a presentation by Dr. Vince Cerf, who is one of the early pioneers uh, of the Internet. So please check out uh, their website for some really good information. Lisa is going to talk just a minute about Facebook's uh, data center and their massive investment in our uh, community, a $2, million cap $2 billion capital investment, $2.5 
million uh, square feet. And one of the things I'll mention about Facebook, in addition to their capital investment, is just their substantial investment in our community and what they've done to become a really good neighbor here in Henrico, which was phenomenal uh, before uh, the coronavirus hit and, and since then just an incredible uh, partner. Every local government you talk to is going to say they have a fast track process and Henrico is no exception. But I wouldn't ask you uh, to believe us. I would simply say, look at the evidence, which is that Facebook came to Henrico late in 2016. And 10 months later, in the uh, early fall of 2017, an announcement was made. And during that 10 month period, all permits, all land use applications, every approval was every approval was put out.